Okay, so we're finally at the point where we're ready to install our first distribution. As a bit of review, a distribution is kind of just a grab bag of programs and desktop environments and customized themes all sitting on top of the Linux kernel, which of course sits on top of your hardware. Now there's plenty of YouTube videos out there that say, you know, the top 10 Linux distributions for beginners or the must have Linux distribution or the best Linux distribution for gaming. And, you know, there's some truth to these um, sorts of videos or these rankings, but for the most part, like I said in the previous video, Linux is Linux and given enough time and know-how, you can really make any distribution do the same thing as any other distribution. All that being said, I'm going to recommend uh, four possible distributions here uh, for your first Linux install. On my screen, I'm running Arch Linux right now with a GNOME desktop environment. Um, if those words are going over your head, it's not super important, but you can kind of see the setup I'm running, sort of a vanilla um, Arch GNOME system. But that's not what I would recommend for your first distribution. We're going to take a look at four of them right now. The first distribution that I would recommend is Linux Mint with the Cinnamon desktop environment. So let's come over here to Linux Mint. Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu, I believe, which is you know a layer of compatibility or a, a, a distribution based off of Debian. And so you're kind of like getting a little bit removed from the, the stream right now. You have Debian at the top and then below that Ubuntu and below that Linux Mint. But Linux Mint is probably one of the more user-friendly and accessible distributions to get going with because it's so familiar for Windows users. The first time you install Linux Mint, you're going to feel right at home if you're coming from a Windows 7, 10, or you know Windows 11 looks a little bit different now, but any Windows-based system. Obviously, things are going to be slightly different, right? Because at the, the fundamental level at the kernel system, it's not running NT like Windows is. Uh, so it's still going to be a Linux system. You know, files are going to be in a slightly different spot. Um, the file structure is going to be slightly different. Programs are obviously not going to be compatible, right? Linux still doesn't run .exe without a lot of workarounds. But the user interface in the desktop environment, Linux runs Cinnamon, is going to be really, really familiar. You'll have your bottom... Um, your bottom panel with what amounts to a start button where you can access your programs. You're going to have a desktop where you can drag files and shortcuts and you know all the things you're used to doing on Windows. Um, and you're going to have an app store that, like a, a, a graphical user interface app store, which will mitigate the number and frequency of times that you need to get into the terminal to actually do anything on your system. Uh, terminal stuff is a little bit more advanced for users, so the distributions I'm going to be recommending, uh, Linux Mint included, you should be able to operate at a pretty high capacity without having to get into the terminal. So over here on Linux Mint's website, if you come over here to download, you'll see their latest release. It's based on Ubuntu, I, I don't know, some sort of long-term release on Ubuntu. I don't really keep up with them. But it's it's really stable. Um, the team at Linux Mint does a really good job of making sure that new packages that are released are compatible, that they don't break your system when they're installed, and that the, uh, that the kernel is really stable, and that you're going to have a really good uh, computing experience without a lot of technical know-how. So this is number one. If you come over here to download, you can just click on that. It'll take you to the, the download page. Again, I recommend the Cinnamon edition here not the MATE or the XFCE edition. I think if you're running relatively recent hardware, I would say within the past five years, uh, Cinnamon should run fine. It's not very resource hungry, but it is more resource hungry than MATE or XFCE. But if you're running anything upwards of four gigabytes of RAM and a relatively modern processor, you should be fine. And so if you just click on download, it'll take you to their installation guide, their ISO, if you don't know how to burn an ISO onto a bootable USB drive, there are plenty of guides for that. I may release one in the future as well. And then you'll end up installing it on your system. But we're going to come back to that before we actually do an installation. So number one, check out Linux Mint. If you're coming from Windows and you really like that uh, workflow that Windows provides, you'll feel right at home at Linux Mint. The second one I would recommend is KDE Neon. 
So KDE Neon um, ships with the KDE Plasma desktop environment, which is also really similar to Windows. You can kind of see this screen capture down here. You have your what amounts to a start button down in your lower left. You have your system tray and clock and calendar down in your lower right. So all that's very reminiscent of Windows 10 and Windows 7. And you also have your desktop where you can put shortcuts and programs and files and you know all the stuff you, you're used to on Windows. The difference from my perspective between KDE Neon and Cinnamon, or KDE Plasma and Cinnamon, right? The difference between KDE Neon and Linux Mint is the amount of customization that you can uh, do with KDE Plasma. So if you were one of the users that identified yourselves as primarily be being concerned with aesthetic and you want to have like a more beautiful um, aesthetic computing experience, KDE Neon is going to be more up your alley. The amount of customization you can do with KDE is essentially limitless and it all ships out of the box by default. They have a wonderful app store um, so you can install all of your programs via a graphical user interface. They have a wonderful widget selection. You can, you know, install the widgets that they already have pre-configured on their system, or you can download and install new widgets um, either on the web or through their own, like, in-computer service. Uh, and it, it's just a really stable, solid um, distribution with a really beautiful and feature-rich desktop environment. So if you're concerned with um, uh, aesthetics again and you're coming from Windows, I really recommend KDE Neon for that sort of user. If you come over here, um, you'll have the download KDE Neon, and it's the same sort of thing. I would recommend the user edition, not the testing edition. The user edition is gonna be very stable. The testing edition is gonna be a little less stable. Um, so same way that Linux Mint, uh, how their team would vet programs and make sure that compatibility is always paramount, that user experience is always paramount, KDE Neon will do the same thing. So I recommend installing KDE Neon if you want a little bit more customization with your desktop environment, otherwise sticking primarily with Linux Mint. The third one I'm gonna recommend is going to be Pop OS. Pop OS is kind of the, uh, the rock star, in my opinion. You may have seen on Linus Tech Tips or some other Linux YouTube channels that Pop OS is like, the recommended distro for uh, newbies and for beginners. I put Pop OS third only for the reason that the desktop environment that ships with it is based on GNOME at the moment. And GNOME is pretty foreign to Windows, right? Again, that's the system I'm running. And you can tell that GNOME looks different. It has like this activities overflow where we can change uh, desktop environments. We have this like app launcher here. None of this really looks like Windows. And so Pop! OS is a solid distribution if you're okay with changing how you task on your computer. That being said, Pop! OS really is a joy to use. I think of the ones I'm recommending today, Pop! OS has the best app store, which also mitigates the, the need to get into your terminal if you're a little uncomfortable with that. And Pop! OS ships with proprietary video card drivers. So if you have a computer that's running an NVIDIA video card and you're thinking about gaming, Pop! OS is good because these ship by default and they provide a little bit more support for the, the graphics cards for gaming. Uh, so if you're looking to get into gaming, either through Proton or through Lutris, um, and you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you're probably going to want to check out Pop! OS. So same thing here, head over to download. They'll give you um, the options here. Obviously, you would choose which one um, is most appropriate for you. Again, if you're an NVIDIA user, you probably want this one, 21.10, for the NVIDIA um, graphics cards. You also have an option for long-term support, but I haven't really noticed a big difference between these two distribution or these two releases in day-to-day -day usage. But of course, your mileage may vary. The last one I would recommend, and again, this might be controversial, is Manjaro. So Manjaro Linux is based on Arch. The other three were based on Debian. And Arch is a little bit different. 
So Debian uh, is kind of like the most upstream version of these distributions. Debian um, is follows a life cycle of stable releases. So I think it's like every two years or every four years, they'll release a big update to their system, which rolls down to all the distributions downstream. Uh, and it functions really similarly to how Windows does updates. You know, every six months you might get an update or every year you might get an update. Every two years you might get a really big update. But Manjaro is based on Arch and Arch is what we refer to as a rolling distribution, meaning there's no like big landmark or tentpole releases for Manjaro. When packages and kernels get updated after they get vetted by the team, they're immediately applied to your system. So if you're in need of more cutting edge program releases, then a rolling distribution like uh, Arch or Manjaro is going to be more appropriate for you. With Manjaro, if we come over here to downloads, I would recommend going with Manjaro GNOME. They have three versions here. They have a version based off of XFCE, which is a desktop environment, a version based off of KDE Plasma, which is the same desktop environment from KDE Neon, and they have a um, distribution here based on GNOME. The reason why I would recommend GNOME with Arch is because if you're really looking to get into the KDE uh, Neon or the KDE Plasma desktop environment, I would just recommend getting it straight from the source and downloading KDE Neon. That being said, if you do want KDE Plasma with a rolling distribution, then of course um, Manjaro KDE is going to fit that bill really nicely. But I would recommend going with GNOME K, uh, Manjaro if you're looking for a rolling distribution. Again, as a word of caution, GNOME is a, a sizable difference, uh, is sizably different than Windows in terms of usage and workflow. So it's going to take some time to get used to. And same way before, if you just hit get, get GNOME, it'll take you to their download page. And on this one, I would recommend not getting the minimal install. I would recommend getting the this top release here. Minimal install is really nice, but it gives you a very, very vanilla stripped down version of the distribution. Now, you may be looking for something like that, but most new users are probably going to want things like an office suite or a video player or a music player kind of built into the, the cake. But the stripped down minimal doesn't have those features and you're going to be forced to install them on your own. Again, to review each of these, Linux Mint, KDE Neon, Pop! OS, and Manjaro GNOME, they all come with app stores, they all come with like automatic system updates, they all kind of minimize the need to get into the terminal, which might be a little intimidating for new users, and they're all going to have really polished out-of-the-box experiences, which as a new user we're probably looking for. Now once you select which of these four you would like to install, I would um, come here, download the ISO, and install it onto a USB, and all four of these should come shipped with something called a live environment. So when you plug in this USB for the first time and you boot from the USB, you're going to be booted into something that looks and acts like the distribution you're about to install. Live environments are kind of like these self-contained little isolated computing experiences where you can get in there and install programs, get in there and make files, get in there and work on things, web browse, all of that stuff. But then when you shut down your computer, or shut down the live environment, and you boot it again, those changes won't be saved, which might seem a little bit weird, like why would you want to do that? But the benefit in booting from a live environment to test these out before you install is that you can check compatibility issues with your hardware. So say you download Manjaro GNOME and for some reason you can't connect to the internet because your modem, the, the, the modem card on your computer isn't compatible with Manjaro GNOME. It's going to save you a lot of headache later if you, you know, installed it and then figured out that the, uh, the internet didn't work, right? So you can troubleshoot a lot of these things. You can install programs that you've been using, something like... Um, I don't know, Caden Live for video editing, you can run it, you can see how it functions, you can test out the workflow, you can see if you really like it. It's like test driving a car. And so install these live environments onto a USB, run them, you know, test drive the car, and then if you like it, 
commit to installing. Now the big um, disclaimer here is once you install one of these, you're going to be formatting your hard drive, right? You're, you're going to have to format your hard drive to install like this whole new file system and this whole new kernel onto your computer. So make sure you back up your data, important data, before you install. Because once you install, that stuff is gone. Uh, so these are the four I recommend. In future videos, we'll be going into a little bit of a deeper dive with each of these four, kind of going through the ins and outs of them. But, you know, until that video, feel free to test out these live environments, see the workflow, get comfortable with it, and see how it runs on your computer. But thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next video.